one time. So, so the question was, uh, could we have a session focused on drawing on mixing matrices for agent-based models? And the answer is uh, yes, if there's interest, I could do a session on that. But you know, with a nod towards my comments on the three ways that that models come together with data, dynamic models come together with data. I'll just say that um, mixing matrices for many, from the perspectives of many agent-based models are um, somewhat higher level constructs. They're emergent constructs. This is not true for all agent-based models. There are the occasional agent-based models where the mixing matrix is directly kind of one-to-one -one with how the model captures context. But generally speaking, for, for a lot of agent-based models, what's observed in mixing matrix is kind of a summary of a more complex process, which is going on at an age-based level, which may involve partner change over time, partners, partnership establishment and dissolution, think for, you know, uh, sexual contact or needle-based, you know, bloodborne illness or needle sharing. Um, uh, think for um, uh, for cases of sort of household versus workplace context. So, you know, when when we have an age-based model, often is articulated in a way which which gets us to think mechanistically about where contacts are taking place, how over time, maybe. Networks are dynamic in the model, um, uh, so they're you know formed and broken. Um, maybe it, it's context dependent. A person is going between work and school and and home and community interactions, and contacts occur in these different settings. And so when we think about a you know like an age an age specific contact matrix or mix matrix where we have you know fraction of context of a given age group that occur with people in a different age group. That's that's often a very blunt description of, of the situation. It's a summary. And given an agent-based model, we can always summarize up to that level. And we could calibrate an agent-based model to that characterization of an age of a of a mixing matrix. Um, um, so so that would be one mode of doing it. We could also filter in that third technique, we could kind of perform filtering for our model to kind of align it with that with that age specific matrix to kind of you know update the, the, the our assumptions about the state of the model. Parameterization um, uh, is often um, much more challenging because if you have a model where you have contacts occurring at school and home and workplace and and you know, long-term care facilities and and in the community, taking a sort of fraction of all contacts that occur with people in each different age group um, matrix and trying to kind of force it onto that, it's not fine enough granularity. And so so instead, what you do, you know, what, what's happening is you have to you have to either do some sort of weird sort of backing out where you say, well, we'll assume people spend this amount of time here and here, and then we'll use family composition data from the census, and you know, or you you end up calibrating to it. Um, uh, as I said, there, there are exceptions. If you have a really, really fine-grained contact matrix, or you have uh, data from mixing from smartphones, like we do uh, for a lot of our studies, um, which we've conducted with smartphones, or you, um, or you have, you know, data from mobile sensors, um, or you have a high-level agent-based model where, you know, you have kind of static contact assumptions from person to person. Um, then you might be able to more directly one to one make use of that uh, of that 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 data from the world, but but in many cases the data from the world is just at a higher level compared with the model, and you have to do something like calibrate or or do this filtering based the third approach I spoke about, which is called filtering. Um, 
I, I don't a statistical filter. I, I hope that's not um, that I hope that's a bit helpful. Yes, yes, thank you.